So, hello again and welcome. I hope that you're feeling a little bit more grounded and um, perhaps a little bit more present as we now start our session. So, I am going to start sharing my presentation. Just bear with me for one sec. Just confirming that um, Kanika, that you can see, you can see my presentation. I'm going to take that as a yes, that y'all can see this. If you can't, just flag it out to me. <laughs> All right, so welcome again. Um, to this career cafe session and today's session is going to be around um, your well being in a remote working culture. And um, I'm my intent here is to make this as uh, interactive and conversational as possible. So um, again, I'm really hoping that this is going to be a conversation and not necessarily me just downloading information. Um, also coming in with the lens that um, not, please don't take everything that I say as the truth. Um, I invite you as I continue to share and maybe share some experiences and even some different kind of scientific data and facts that you then assess what works and what doesn't work for you. So with that, Make sure. Doesn't seem to be moving. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Guess there's a little bit of lag. So today's discussion. And really what does this mean? Oh, skip ahead. Sorry guys, just bear with me for a sec. Okay. So again, today's discussion is going to be what I'm hoping a uh, really interactive one, even given the fact that we are all on Zoom together and uh, virtually um, existing with one another. So I'm going to be introducing um, really two kind of what I believe to be really essential topics around, um, around surviving and around thriving that are really critical to, um, to our well-being. And um, as I kind of dive into this further, when I talk about emotion, first of all, I want to define what that means. So an emotion is a predisposition to action. So if we really think about it from that definition, that's how I'm going to be using it as we move forward. So I'm going to be defining it, giving some functions around how different emotions and feelings can be used. And then finally, if we feel like we're maybe over inundated, or overstimulated with something. What are some practical ways, really simple, easy ways that we can get out of them? Then we shift the conversation over to thriving. What is really thriving about? Some practices maybe surrounding thriving. And then um, toward the end of the session, I'm gonna have you guys kind of digest everything that I've said <laughs> and um, create your own practice. Create one or two things that you can really take away and start implementing today so that it really, this is a useful conversation. Again, not just me kind of taking up your time. So that's kind of the plan for today. And before we dive in to the content, I'm just gonna give a little bit of info on who I am. So again, my name is Sheila Carpe and I am an Indian American. So I grew up um, in the US, I was born and raised there outside of Philadelphia on the East Coast of the USA. And um, I have been living in Singapore now for the past five years with my husband, Ash. And so who am I? <laughs> there's, an, there's a title up there, Somatic Wellness and Executive Coach. Uh, really what that translates into is I help people lead happy and healthier lives. And that's something that's 
really important to me and has been for a very, very long time. Now, really, what, what is coaching, right? What does it mean when I even put coach up there? Um, coaching is really about enabling powerful conversations among one-on-one -on -one conversations, or that could even be in a group setting, kind of like this one, where I'm not necessarily telling you what to do, although some of this might feel a little bit like advice and some of it is, but really listening intently, questioning back, and um, sharing my own reflections and helping create practices so that my clients and each and every one of you can really start to elevate your well-being. And you'll see the phrase, transforming the way you move to restore and relate, to, to relate to restore balance within. I say restore because each and every one of you already has it within you. It's there. You are a full, whole, capable individual. Yet our past conditioning and our current circumstances and our environment and so many things stack on top of one another and sometimes leave us just a little lost and armored. And so these conversations can really be helpful to help you shift your perspective so that you can create the future that you really hope and desire for. Now, prior to stepping into this health and wellness and executive coaching role, I was in the corporate world. <laughs> so I was there for about 11 years, um, all across healthcare. I worked in a number of hospitals in the um, clinical laboratory. So working at the bench, analyzing specimens, um, doing a lot of different types of testing. And then I shifted into the industry. So I joined Johnson & Johnson nine years ago. And um, I came in there as a compliance analyst, started out on the research and development side of things within pharmaceuticals, really moved around quite a bit within, within J&J. Um, they're a phenomenal company and they have amazing uh, ways to be able to grow and develop their employees. And I was really fortunate to have a lot of strong mentors and leaders um, that really enabled me to, um, to take up these different positions. And five years ago, that brought me to Singapore. I um, was given a global assignment and was working within a regional team here and really played the role of relating between what was happening here in the region. So here within Asia, specifically Southeast Asia and also China, and relating it back to our folks in, the, in our headquarters and helping them to understand really what we were doing and um, to build confidence and trust and to really spotlight the team. The team that I worked very close, closely with was just a young and energetic and bubbly and thriving team. And so I thought of my responsibility to help them grow. And that's really where the coaching bit came in. That's where the personal development side came in. And that's where the leadership and my desire to do that really um, took shape. And so that's why I'm here now. And um, I can say that I've been out of the corporate world for the past five months. And while it's been an interesting time, it has been uh, one of the most worthwhile transitions I think I've ever made. Personally, I love to move. So you're gonna hear me talking a lot about the body. That's what somatic, somatic means. Um, it's all about the body and doing body work. I'm a yoga instructor. Um, I love getting outdoors. I love being in water, my element. And um, I love connecting with people in all different types of ways. And um, my husband and I love to travel. So hopefully that will start again soon when we're actually able to leave the house and able to do that in a safe way. So that's just a little bit about me. Now, let's shift over to this. So this is where it's gonna get a little interactive and I'm gonna try and monitor the chat as well. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag. Um, just give me a sec. Okay, so when I flash this, ah, surviving, we'll wait for the slide to catch up. What does it mean when you hear the word survive? What comes up for you? 
you can type it in the chat because I know that we're all, majority of you are muted. I'm gonna keep an eye on the chat. Again, when you hear the word survive, ah, food, yep. Food is one, 100%. What else? What what else do you do you think of? You're like the necessary. Yeah, to live with basic necessities, right? Yep. Yep. Farming wildlife, sure. Yes. What about the feelings that you might feel if you're if you're trying to survive? Frustration, fear, sure, yep. Plant, uh, yes, math was nice, hierarchy, <laughs> definitely. Yep, we're gonna get into that a little bit later with some of the basic needs around that. Awesome, yeah, so you guys feeling happy? Oh, beautiful, accomplishment, yeah. So um, you guys kind of all got it. We, it, surviving means a number of, has a number of different meanings. And in this context, I'm gonna, uh, related to some of the emotions again predispositions to actions that we might feel that we might be feeling right now even in our current time that we are surviving so as we go through those emotions i'm going to define them i'm going to talk about their uses because you, each of them have a use and then i'm going to talk about how to maybe get yourself out of it if you need to i'm going to switch slides now just wait did it work? Okay, hopefully this will stay. <laughs> so, worry. Hi. All right, hopefully this stays. <laughs> so, okay, so what is worry? I probably don't have to define this. Um, I'm sure, again, all of us can probably relate to this, but one of the, the, the take homes here is around that worry happens in your mind. So it's when you're dwelling maybe on a thought or an uncertainty. There's something in there that just keeps your mind going. So again, it's in the mind. Now it's function. Worrying is important and it does serve a purpose. It gets us to problem solve or actually take action. The thing that we might be worrying about, so maybe we are worrying about a deadline. Maybe we are worried about being able to pay rent. Maybe we are worried about that internship. It usually gets us to get up and do something when it's in the right balance. It's kind of like that just right. But when it starts to become too much and maybe you're over worrying and it starts to consume you, it's what if, what if, what if. That's when it stops becoming functional. So there's a couple of tips that I'm gonna give. And as I am speaking, um, just if you have other tips on how you personally deal with worry or anything else that comes up, just type them in the chat and I'll do my best to also kind of keep track of how things are going. So back to this, give yourself a worry budget. I like to call it a, like a, a worry diet. So maybe you set yourself down for 20 minutes and say, you know what, Sheila, I'm going to sit here for 20 minutes and I'm going to worry. And I will let my mind go all over the place about everything, literally to just anything and everything possible. And then after those 20 minutes are up, I then say, okay, that's enough for today. I think I'm going to stop now. Then if I notice another thought that comes up, it seems like another, well, what if, or something that I, I feel this just, again, uncertainty that I'm just, I want to let go of. I'm going to consciously say, not right now, and leave out of it. Eight to 10, or sorry, 20 minutes, again, is usually works for me. Um, but again, that number could shift or be different for you. Come up with one action. You're going to hear me just, you're going to hear me saying this over and over again. What's the one thing that you can do? The one thing come up with one action so if you are worrying about that internship or you are worrying about that next goal or what's next or about COVID come up with one action there's maybe one person you could talk to 
what's maybe one resource that you could read that might just help you process things? Who's that one person you could maybe talk to about it? Finally, writing them down. So bringing pen to paper, physical pen to paper, <laughs> is highly effective. There's been tons of research done around it. It's actually because of the different parts of the brain that physically writing something down does compared to typing. So write it down. Eight to 10 minutes can be incredibly effective. Just letting yourself worry and be in that. And then sometimes when I do do this practice and I decide that I don't really want to come back to it, I symbolically even tear it up and, and kind of throw it away. But not always. So that's, that's a personal choice. That's really what worry is in some of the ways that we can um, kind of work to it being our benefit and work around it. Now stress. Again, probably something I don't need to <laughs> totally dishonor, out right. But key takeaway, it's in the body, physiological, and it's a response to an environmental change. Function, short bouts give us the extra boost when you need it the most. Now, historically, I'm sure most of you know this, there is a historical, prehistoric complex to it. So when our ancestors, way back in the day, were running away from cyber-toothed tigers and um, all of these different types of species, they had to run for their life. So when they saw a threat coming, that initiated a reaction within to start pumping adrenaline and cortisol through the body so that they could run, outrun whatever was trying to get at them, or they could move their family from danger. I'm sure you guys know of examples of people that have done incredible things in the midst of danger, and even if they're fighting for their life. Again, it just enables us to do superhuman things in acute ways. Now, when it stops being functional is when the threat of that favorite tiger or that car that is about to hit you or your child, when that physical threat is actually not there and it, it becomes in your psyche as a perceived threat. Adrenaline and cortisol start pumping through, pumping, pumping, pumping. And again, that can lead to it becoming too much. So we go from being having these acute, these short bursts of stress to then a chronic burst of stress. Now, stress is, the, especially the chronic part, is really where we start to get into chronic disease, cardiovascular issues. Um, digestive tract, blood pressure, uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. And I could probably do, <laughs> and I'm sure you've attended um, numerous conferences and webinars on stress. I mean, people are doing their entire, you know, research on stress. So it's, it's a huge topic in itself. But just to give you some context, U.S. businesses lose up to 300 billion USD yearly as a result of workplace so it's a big deal. Now, we're gonna shift into when it stops becoming functional and what you can do to get yourself out of it. Move your body, move your body. You're gonna hear me say this again a lot. And moving your body doesn't have to be this long run or this you know, crazy workout or having tons of equipment. Moving your body, you can probably see me, I'm at a standing desk right now, marching my feet. I'm lifting my feet up, you can't see that. <laughs> I'm lifting my feet up and I'm marching in place, taking a walk, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. These are some examples. Dancing. I'm sure you all have a number of other examples that again, um, you can share here or kind of share, you know, among your own circles, but keep that conversation up about how you're moving, even given the fact that many of us are confined to our homes. Get clear on what you can control. This is huge. This is huge. There are a number of things that are outside of our control and they will be there. Accepting that and then saying, what, it, what is it that I have control over? Yes, the future, I don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty. I don't know how this is going to let up. 
with this remote working? Am I always going to be like this? I don't have the answers. Many of us don't. No one really knows. So coming back to what can you control? What can I do today? What can I do right now? What can I do for the next hour? It's going to help me. And then finally, big one, and this is speaking from personal experience, an everyday thing, stop comparing yourself to other people. We have no idea what each person is going through. I don't know what each and every one of you are going through. You don't really know what I'm going through, right? So when we compare ourselves and say, well, how come that person can handle so much stress and so much, and I am over here and I can barely cope? It's because we're different, we're complex beings. And we change, we're constantly changing in emotion. Stop comparing yourself and be kind. Last one in this section is, oh wait for it, anxiety. Key take home here, anxiety lives in your mind and your body. There's a difference between feeling anxious and having an anxiety disorder. I am not an anxiety expert. I am not a counselor, so I'm not gonna speak at length or really address anxiety disorders in much depth here. But what I can say is that anxiety is something, again, that most of us are feeling. Um, I'm feeling it too. Now, an anxiety disorder, the prevalence is actually um, quite interesting. So it varies from about 2.5 to 7% across the globe. And this varies from country to country. This is a little bit of a general stat, yeah? But an estimated 284 million people have experienced some type of anxiety disorder in 2017. And it's the most prevalent mental health or newer, newer neurodevelopment disease to date. So it is here and it's a thing. Now, I'm gonna come back to kind of the everyday type of anxiety. When it stops being functional, these are some tips. Limit your stimulants, your stimulants and your depressants. What are stimulants? Caffeine, sugar, depressants, alcohol. Keep them in check. I'm not saying you cut them all out. <laughs> I still have my cup of coffee, occasional glass of wine. It's okay. Keep yourself in check. I like to do an 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, generally keeping things in check, 20% of the time, I'm going to have my chocolate and my extra glass of red wine. Ground your feet. Ground your feet. So feeling your feet on the ground, that's what we were doing in our mindfulness practice when we started. Feeling your feet on the ground, wiggling those toes. Get your five senses involved. So it's a little mind hack. When sometimes we're just so overwhelmed and in that state of anxiety, sometimes we need some, some little mind tricks or little mind hacks to get ourselves out. So one of them is getting your senses involved. Smell. For me personally, I, um, I, I like essential oils. I'm just starting to get into them. You can see mine. Um, if you don't have essential oils available to you, that's fine. If you have maybe some herbs that are, you know, in your kitchen, like for example, coriander, or even basil, or if you have a mint plant, just even taking that and just getting a whiff of that, or if you have a favorite smell or scent, keep that close. Lavender is the one that I just showed is one of my favorites and kind of go to. Another one, um, hearing, music. Turn some music on, depending on what your mood is. You know, and, and see if you want to kind of, if you need energy, you need to get lifted up, play some music to pump you up. If you need to settle down, get something kind of more mellow and calm. The other one is touch. So um, I personally like to wear bracelets. These are my crystals. Um, and I like to have them on my wrist. For me, it's just a reminder as I'm typing or as I'm working, a reminder to come back to them. And if I'm really feeling tense, um, I'll usually just kind of you know, rub them and just feel them. Um, so those are just some of my examples. And I am going to pause here, take a quick look at the chat and just see what's been happening. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're still good, yep. And everyone can still pretty much hear me, which is good to hear. So, um, so 
that's kind of that. Any um, before we kind of move forward to the next part, just wanted to see if there was any anything that you wanted to bring up here, any revelations that you're experiencing, just type them in the chat. I've got the chat box open. Okay, cool. Well, keep those chat boxes open. <laughs> now we've got Thrive here. So, what does it mean to thrive? When you hear the word thrive, what comes to mind? And I'm keeping an eye on the chat. What comes to mind when you, when you hear the word thrive? That forward. Awesome. Yep. So again, I, I love that. Yeah. Prosperity, success, confidence. Awesome. That forward moving momentum, success, being able to achieve what you're, what you're going for. Prosperity, confidence. Brilliant. Mm, to make an effort for it in a progressive manner. Awesome. Yeah. In a progressive manner, right? So building on the progress that we make with these, with these small steps that we take every day. Awesome. Yeah, perfect. You guys pretty much defined it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to the next slide. So, yeah, growing holistically, awesome to make an effort for, yep, growing holistically, brilliant. Oh, yes, holistic. It's, that's like, that's, that, that's, that's it right there. Um, so really thriving, you guys already hit it. Um, it hit the nail on the head. From a dictionary perspective, it's to grow, develop, or be successful. The choice is ours. The choices are. Do you remember one thing? Remember that you always have a choice. I always have a choice. You always have a choice. You're going to see a graphic or a little pick over here to the right. Don't worry about squinting and trying to read it. The intent is not for you to read the information. It's just to show that there are different zones. You might hear this in different ways. From a psychology perspective, you might hear different things behaviorally, you might hear growth mindset, fixed mindset, you manifest in many different uh, materials and content. Each serve a purpose. You're going to hear me say that a lot too. Each serve a purpose. There's fear. There's a fear zone. What you, know, you guys were saying earlier about kind of surviving, sometimes you need to be that fear does serve a purpose. Now, if you're ready to be in that fear and accept that fear and you're ready to, to move forward, right? To holistically grow, to make progress. Learning and growth are going to be really, really important. And so for the thriving part of it, I'm gonna say more in kind of the learning and the growth zone. So, and as I move into these slides, this is gonna be more around um, kind of some of my tips. And again, as I'm sharing, if you have anything that you wanna add in the chat, just add it. So the first one is managing your energy. So time management. I know we talk a lot about it and time management is so important. My two cents, energy management is probably just as important, if not slightly more important. And here's why. Energy is infinite. And some could say time is too, and again, that's for a whole other discussion. <laughs> um, but for the sake of this, energy is really, really important. I'm gonna break it down from three different components. You've got your virtual, your physical, and your emotional. The first one, Zoom fatigue is real. We're on this right now, yeah, it is real. And here's why, when we're in person, our psyches and our being and our, our minds and our bodies, we're, we're, we're picking up on different cues within, in, within the environment. We're being able to sense when someone is, you know, crossing their arms, maybe crossing their legs. 
maybe showing signs of disappointment or whatever it might be, we're able to pick up on those cues. Yet on Zoom, you pretty much see me from here on up. It's a lot harder for each and every one of us to be able to really make sense of what's happening. So our minds are working really on overtime. So that's why it's a real thing. Now, what I'm gonna pose to you is, What's your Zoom meeting number for today? So for today, you know, you are my, you're my third Zoom meeting. <laughs> and um, this is the, you know, my first one that I'm actually really facilitating. The other ones I was not, I was, I was involved in the other one too. So really after this one today, I'm going to be done with Zoom and probably going to go recover, have a nice meal, go to bed early, you know, really deep, you know, decompress. But back to you. What's your Zoom number? And um, really being okay with making that known and setting those boundaries, yeah? Setting those boundaries. And again, I know boundaries is a, is a is even, is an even bigger topic. And physical boundaries are really challenging right now, especially as we are coexisting with families and small spaces and not being able to go outside, so I get it. Um, but this is something you do have control over. So if you are on your sixth Zoom call of the day, and you are going into it blurry eyed <laughs> and just not feeling it. That's your body telling you that that's enough. So just pay attention to that. Physically, sitting all day is exhausting. Some people say, some studies have said, you know, standing, or sorry, sitting is like the new smoking. Um, I, I don't know if I would go to that extreme, um, but again, that's for another day. <laughs> probably another debate or, or a discussion we could probably have. Um, but I know for a fact for me that when I sit for long periods of time, it's exhausting. It also contributes to a number of chronic, um, chronic diseases and illnesses, and it, it just has an impact on our stress levels as well. So they're all correlated. So um, make sure you're standing up. Again, even if it's for like five minutes and you're sitting back down, just do that. Um, you're going to see a visual over to the left side over here. It says 2020. 20. So, um, you know, sitting and being focused for those 20 to 25 minutes. And then after that's done, looking away, they say for about 20 seconds, and they say looking 20 feet away or about six meters away to really give yourself a break. I'm going to add on to that. One technique that I really personally like to use that just helps me focus and manage my energy is a technique called the Pomodoro technique. P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O. -O -O. This is basically same thing as the 20-20-20, a little bit different though. 25 minutes of focused work followed by a five minute break. And in those five minutes, I'll get up, I'll walk around, I'll have a sip of water, I'll talk to my husband do whatever I need to do, and then I'll sit back down and I'll get back to it. And in those 25 minutes where I'm focusing, I have what I'm trying to achieve there in front of me. In these 25 minutes, I'm going to send two emails and I'll start to work toward that. Now granted, not every task can be done in 25 minutes. So if there's one that's a little bit longer, I'm gonna say, okay, this is the task and I'm hoping to at least get 25% of it done or whatever. Um, so that's something that kind of helps me stay in check and also kind of from a physical and virtual and emotional standpoint, it helps me focus on what I need to do, what I need to prioritize. And finally, emotionally, we are collectively grieving. The Harvard, Harvard Business Review has a phenomenal article um, highlighting this. And again, I am not a grief expert nor counselor, um, but I can say that um, the grief is real. And oftentimes we associate that with the loss of, of somebody. Um, really it's around a loss of anything. So with the number of my clients, when I'm coaching them and talking to them, we're talking about even the loss of a routine, the loss of having that routine of being able to wake up, get dressed, walk outside and drive to work or walk to work or bike to work or whatever that might be to have that physical separation, that freedom to be able to say, I'm going to travel to insert the blank that freedom to be able to go visit family and friends. Um, these, all, these things all add up and it is grief. And there's many different forms of it. 
and it's a phenomenal article. And um, the one that I want to highlight is also anticipatory grief. Um, I know I experienced that being an entrepreneur right now in these times. <laughs> uh, interesting, yeah? Don't really know exactly how it's all going to go. Um, and so that can become really overwhelming. And so similar to how I sometimes let myself be in that worry or be in that anxiety, I let myself grieve. Uh, you know, I'm from the U.S. And so, you know, in recent events, what's been happening over the past week has been, um, and with COVID, has been really heart-wrenching and um, incredibly upsetting. And the amount of injustice that's being served is, is upsetting. Um, and so I'm letting myself be in that grief of it and just checking in with myself and seeing, you know, um, how am I gonna be kinder? So that's from an energy standpoint. Now we're going to go to my next one, which is one of my favorite words to ever say is nourishment. Nourish, nourish, nourish. <laughs> so when we think about nourishment, automatically what comes to my mind at least is diet and exercise. Both of those things are important. I've alluded to them a little bit, but I'm gonna focus on um, kind of Three really big ones, sleep. Sleep, back to Maslow's you know, basic um, needs hierarchy that was mentioned earlier. Sleep is essential. It goes along with, it's necessary for everything that we do. It's, it's equivalent to literally everything that we do. And I, I stress sleep here because with my clients that I work with, sleep comes up in almost every single conversation. It doesn't matter gender, race, ethnicity, country, level of success. It, literally, you can throw any other factor out and sleep is something that without a doubt comes out. Not always upfront as a goal to work on, but it's usually somewhere in there. So that's why I'm really highlighting it today. So the recommended number for adults is seven to nine hours of sleep. Now, <laughs> I don't know how, I wish I had set up a poll function because I would love to poll the audience and see how many of us are actually getting seven to nine hours of sleep. <laughs> um, but it's, again, it's, it's just crucial. And if there was one thing that I could say, like sleep, sleep is just a miracle worker, similar to exercise, similar to drinking water and eating right. Sleep is literally a miracle worker. So give yourself that time. You're not too busy to sleep. And, um, to the screen and kind of the screen time, you know, our phones, yeah, they um, emit these blue lights. And there have been studies that have been correlated to show that it actually disrupts the mechanisms and the effects of melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that is released with the sleeping and wake cycle. Some people take supplemental mel melatonin to help, um, you know, there's a lot of stats and stuff around that, but we naturally produce melatonin within us. And melatonin levels are usually highest between 10 to 11 p.m. at night. That's usually kind of the guidance is, is to get to bed around that time if you can. But even if you can't, um, some of the things you can do is putting your phone down at least 20 minutes before bed. The recommended average is about an hour. Um, I'm gonna personally say that an hour is challenging for me. Uh, I think I'm at about 30 minutes now. I started at about five minutes and then was able to progressively grow. So again, progressively taking one step at a time. Next topic, hydrating. Again, I don't really need to stress this, but it is so important. We can live without food, but we cannot live without clean water for a very long time. The recommended average for females is 2.7 liters or about 11 cups of water. For males, it's around 16 cups or about 3.7 liters. Now, the main source, of course, is water. So, you know, intaking your water if you can um, do that. But there are other ways. You can do it through your fruits and vegetables. So vegetables like cucumbers, um, celery, um, fruits like tomatoes, strawberries, cantaloupe, watermelon. Um, these all have you know, hydrating sources and have components of water in them. So you can up those. And finally, pause. So I'm going to invite all of you to right now sit back in your chairs. Come back to where you were as we were in our mindfulness practice earlier. Close your eyes if you'd like. Take a deep breath in. 
and out. Another deep breath in. Exhale out. Final one. And exhale out. Open your eyes. How do you feel? Hopefully a little bit more grounded and um, hopefully in the now again. Pausing, breathing. These are all things that we can do automatically. They're free. They're always there no matter where we physically are. And anybody can do them in some way, shape, or form if you are living. So just something to really take away. Now, <clears throat> it's your turn. So I'm just taking a quick peek at the time. Perfect, we've got a little bit more time left. Now, I've just put out a lot of information um, and I'd really like for each and every one of you to be able to take maybe one or two things away that you can start doing now. So I'm gonna ask you to grab a pen and paper and write down one or two things, one or two actions that you commit to doing. Starting from today, you're committing to doing. Make it simple. Make it simple. Keep it simple. If one of your goals is to drink more water, then maybe one of your goals right after we get off this session is to grab, you know, your Nalgene or grab your water, your water thermos that you have and keep that out on the counter and keep that full. Maybe if you have another goal of, uh, I'm trying to think of something else, of maybe wanting to meditate. That's something that I hear a lot. Commit to downloading an app. You know, there are tons of apps out there or resources. Commit to doing research for it and downloading that app. So again, keep it simple. Keep it something that you can do in two to five minutes after we leave. I'm going to put myself on mute now and give you all about two minutes to jot it down. And then after that, you can share in the chat if you'd like. Two minutes starts now.
Okay, and I am back. So um, if you'd like to share in the chat, please go ahead and share what are the one or two things that you're going to do. And I'm keeping an eye on it. If you don't feel comfortable sharing here, that's fine too. Um, I personally find that just sharing a goal with like an accountability buddy is really helpful. So, awesome. I'll work out and put my phone away when working for internship bachelor thesis. Awesome, great, congratulations. Wake up early in the morning, okay, wake up early. Awesome. Yoga and three liters of water, great. Take a break of five minutes after one hour of work, keep a bottle of water with me, listen to calm music every day, do yoga for 15 minutes. Awesome. I'm, yeah, I'm loving these. These are, these are great. And, you know, even the act of, you know, writing them down and then typing them out here and having your community being able to, um, here at the Career Cafe, right? You know, having your community being able to see that you've made this declaration. Um, I know for me personally, it has an impact. Journaling, oh yes, journaling is um, such a beautiful practice. So incredible. Um, I'm very excited for all of you and thank you for, you know, for sharing that. So I know we've got three minutes left and I am just going to kind of wrap things up. Keep them coming in the chat. You know, I'll, I'll keep monitoring them. Um, so key takeaways. Emotions are predispositions to action. And when they are in balance, they serve a purpose. They serve a purpose. Emotions serve a purpose. Breathe and move. Ready to change your story? Ready to get unstuck? I would say 9.9 .9 times out of 10. If you breathe, and really focus on your breath and you move your body, it's gonna be a great starting point. And then finally, be kind to yourself. Guys, we are in, um, we, are, we are just in, the, in these times that I was talking to my you know, mentor coach earlier today and she was saying that in her experience and in her depth, she you know, believes that this is one of the most challenging times in history that any of us have ever faced. So be kind. It's okay to feel anxious. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to be everything that you are because it's exactly what you are and who you are. Just keeping track and tuning in to how you are and how your body's doing. And if you need help or you need a place to go to, you have support. There is support. Focus on what you can control. You have control over yourself. And with that, I leave you with something to think about. Grief and resilience live together. This is by um, the former first lady of the US, Michelle Obama. And I just think this is so appropriate for where we are right now. Um, we are living with all these different emotions and different feelings and different things that are happening, yeah? So um, they live together and they, they coexist together. So um, just know that these are those times and know that it's okay to be in this space of duality and it's okay to be happy and sad and literally the same moment. <laughs> um, I say all of these things to you as much as I say it to myself. And with that, last slide. Now I open it up. I know we only, I think have like a minute, but if there are any, um, if there are any questions, I did see that someone had a question about what is repeating what the 2020-20 the model is, so I'm, I'm happy to repeat that. Um, so 20 minutes of focused work, then looking away from your computer, 20 feet or six meters away for 20 seconds. That's where it comes in. 20 minutes focus looking 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Helps with just um, eye fatigue and again, just
kind of looking at different points and not always looking at the screen scrolling at you. Do you have any, um, does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, I know we're kind of at the uh, top of the hour um, and dep or depending on where you are, <laughs> Uh, your morning or afternoon. Um, you know, I know there's a lot going on, so happy to answer any questions. Or if you don't want to put them here, I've, I've listed my email, Sheila at ThriveHour.com. You can also LinkedIn me. I know there's quite a few of you that have already, uh, you know, LinkedIn connected with me. That's perfect. You can message me there. And um, if you're interested, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I also do um, these types of sessions for other people through Thrive Hour which is the company you kind of see down here at the right um, that I am currently working through. And our website is there too. Just wanted to quickly jump in, Sheila, and yeah. just wanted to um, thank you for actually taking out time and you know devoting that time to speak to our students. Um, I mean, um, IF is truly grateful for the effort that you've made to make sure that you know they get um, factual information as well as uh, get aware about things that maybe we don't think about every day. Um, super, super important um, um, for uh, this session was definitely very, very important uh, to be held. Um, I would just give two minutes more to the students if they do have any questions and they want to type it out. Um, let's um, just type about your questions, I will say them out loud and then maybe she can answer your questions. Um, of course, you still have a choice to just email her um, and uh, or connect with her on LinkedIn. So I'm just gonna wait for two more minutes and see if there is any question that pops up. Perfect. Thank you. And thanks for this opportunity, you know, Tanika and to, um, you know, ingenious, ingenious spaces and, um, you know, the Career Cafe, great to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, someone is asking, um, Kartikya is asking, is there any quick way to sleep at night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, well, <laughs> um, I don't know that there's like a quick fix, yeah? I think that it really depends on like you as a person. So I would just encourage you to experiment, but I'll speak for myself. A couple of things that work really well for me is um, taking, is meditating before bed. So I do the flying down, which oftentimes turns into me sleeping, um, falling asleep, which is great. And I like to actually, I know you can't really see my full body, but I, I like to put one hand on my heart and one hand on my stomach. And what that does is it just kind of connects me back into me. And it reminds me to breathe through my belly, the diaphragmatic breath. So really breathing into that. And that usually just calms me. It's, it's incredible. And what that also does is it, it, um, it stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system, which really helps with kind of like easing out the stress. It's parasympathetic nervous system is um, used within yoga, within all Tai Chi, within all of these different practices to kind of get that. So that's really helpful for me. Um, making sure that your environment is conducive. Uh, again, like uh, if, you know, like Hopefully, if the light, if, if you're having a lot of light coming into your room, that can be really distracting if you're trying to sleep in the morning. So getting an eye mask or putting a towel over your eyes, um, making sure the room is cool um, are a couple of other things. And really, I would say the biggest thing for me is the cell phone. Like, try and tune that down a little more if you can. Um, you know, maybe if, if you're already doing 10 or 15 minutes, see if maybe 30 minutes could work. Um, yes, those are my tips. Hopefully, they're helpful. <laughs> I think the uh, I think definitely the cell phone thing should do the trick because we kind of are stuck to our cell phone uh, and we think that it will actually help us sleep. So just scrolling through your social media at night and maybe that will help us sleep. But I think uh, it's the other way around. It's um, it's kind of distracting us uh, from 
are I, I think I'm sure uh, uh, that uh, kind of distracts me like if I'm also I get so stuck to it at night that I can't keep it down um, so yeah thank you for that tip as well uh, any other questions uh, for mm -hmm. her um, I don't think that they have any other questions okay great uh, so thank you so much Sheila for this uh, session um, I mean, I think I have uh, expressed my gratitude before as well. Um, I think this was super important for the students to understand and be aware of um, this. And uh, thank you so much for articulating so well uh, why it's important and how they can actually work towards uh, pausing a little bit more in life. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And really a lot of people are thanking you as well on the chat. Oh. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm reading it now. Thank you. Oh, I'm 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 very humbled. Thank you, thank you. I I love I I love doing this, and I um, have a lot of passion for this topic. So mm -hmm. it's really my privilege. So thank you again. And I know we're a bit over. So thanks for hanging on for a little bit longer. <laughs> no problem at all. All right. Thank you, students, cool. for being here as well. Um, thank you, Sheila, again. And I will see all of you in the next Career Cafe as well. So see you then. And um, again, um, thank you, everyone. And bye-bye. <laughs>